Press the raise hand button now. We'll get started with Nolan King. Your line is live. Hey, Ryan. Uh, you know, you spoke earlier about how you, you really wanted to avenge your loss against Leota Machida. Um, can you speak a little bit more on that? And then also, you got Vadim Nemkov in this tournament, too. So do you feel like this is kind of the Ryan Bader revenge tour, so to speak? Yeah, for, for sure. You know, uh, Machida, I've always wanted to revenge that loss, you know. Um, most importantly, it was a long time ago, and it's a great gauge to see, you know, where I came from when I literally knew nothing striking to where I am now, you know. And so um, when he came over to Bellator, that's one fight that I always had my eye on. And then Nemkov, you know, of course, you know, he has a belt right now and definitely want revenge on that, you know, with the proper – preparation for that fight and weight cut going in there I feel like it'd be a different story and so um this whole this whole tournament's awesome though great guys um you know tough competition every single fight belts on the other side for now so that means they got to make it to the finals and fight for the belt in the finals I'm just following up on that uh you just kind of spoke to it but do you feel like you've made the the, the proper adjustments the pro proper uh, changes that if you go into these fights again against those two guys that, that you'll come out victorious? Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, like I was saying, Machida, I'm, I'm a totally different fighter than I was back then. I mean, 2012, um, long time ago. And uh, with Nemkov, for sure, like I was saying, um, that was the proper time to cut the weight. You know, I felt flat. I felt just different in there last time. And right when I was in my own head thinking, all right, I got to, I got to get this going. This is not going well. You know, that's why we got kicked in the head. So um, definitely love to go back to drawing board and, and get that one back. And so both those fights, you know, especially this fight coming up with Machida, I'm a totally different person. And last one too. I kind of overlooked at the Rumble fight too. Yeah, like I said earlier on the on the uh, press conference, this is a redemption year, especially in this tournament. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get to fight all of them. You know, I'm gonna get, probably get to fight two of them uh, potentially. So, uh, you know, that's all I can do on my side. But this first fight in this first round is definitely one that I want back for sure. We'll take a question from Jacob Odelstad. Hello, Ryan. What's going on? Yes. Uh, so you obviously fought Leo Machida once before in 2012, like uh, we've been asking. And what are the main things you learned from that loss? And how, what are your main improvements that you have done over all of these years? Yeah, you know, with uh, Leota Machida, um, one thing is you have to be patient, but you you know you have to be smart about when you attack. And in the first time, I remember thinking, "Man, nothing is happening in this fight." And so um, I thought I was getting out of the way and coming in, you know, with the strike when I really wasn't. I was just running right into him, you know. So um, my patience got the best of me the first time, um, but. I'm a better wrestler, better MMA wrestler, better striker than I was in 2012. Um, you know, um, better fighter overall, uh, veteran now, smarter, game planning, and all that stuff. I've got a guy that emulates Machida exactly um, in the karate world. And so, you know, we're, we're going to uh, have some fun with this fight. I look to put the right amount of pressure on him and, and look to take him out. Dylan Bowker. Hey there, Ryan. Appreciate you making the time here. This might be a bit of a curious question to answer here, but I'm kind of curious if there's greater redemption to be found in avenging prior losses to some of the aforementioned opponents through this field or in regaining the Bellator light heavyweight title, like which takes precedence? Well, I'm in a good position where I get to do one right off the bat and then the other later. You know, I, I have Machida first round and that's one, you know, one of wanted to get back, like I was saying earlier, because I get to gauge myself and see how far I've grown from that fight when literally knew nothing strike in the striking department, you know, and if I do my part, I beat him. And then, you know, I win another fight, then I'm in the finals for the belt, you know, and uh, that side is definitely um, got some great fights and, and who knows who comes out with the belt on that side. So I just need to do my part um, in doing my part. I'm going to get my ultimate goal, which is, Get that light heavyweight belt back. Steve Julen. Thank you, Ryan. Since you just mentioned that anybody could come out of the other side of the tournament with the belt, would it be frustrating to you if you got to the finals and it wasn't Vadim Nemkov? 
No, you know, um, the sport's crazy, right? And we, that, and that side too is, is, uh, you never know what's going to happen. Um, yeah, I would want to revenge my loss, but we're in it to fight for, to be the world champion and to have that belt. So whoever has that belt, you know, I'm not going to be mad because that's going to be a tough fight no matter what between Phil Davis, Yoel and Anthony Johnson, you know? So, um, you know, it, it would actually bring some new blood into this, into the division and it'd be fun that way. But um, for me, the, the championship is the biggest part. And so that's what I'm focused on. And you talked about how in that first fight, your Nemkov fight, the first time it was flat because you had a problem with cutting and it wasn't really going well for you. But were you surprised by how fast he was in there? Cause he seemed to be circling you quite, quite quickly. I was uh, surprised with his footwork a little bit, kind of his in and out. Um, I hit him with a jab early, and he kept, you know, grabbing his eye and blinking and all that, and I got him with, got him with takedown. And then I just kind of, you know, was flat with it the whole time. My footwork was terrible. Just fell off. You know, it's one of those nights where, just to be honest, fell off. And and I remember, I remember thinking in my head, you got to keep not keep slipping to that side, you know, and uh, – um, when I was about to turn it around and I thought that, that's when he threw that kick. It was a beautiful kick, set it up perfectly. Um, so his biggest thing would be his footwork and how quick he could come in and out. We'll take a question from Chris Santiago. Hey, Ryan, how's it going? Good, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, you know, we last saw you against Rumble in SCG 19. Uh, what can you say about grappling a, a former foe? Yeah, it was fun. It's one of those things where, you know, it, you get paid to go out there and not get punched in the face and compete, which is great. And I got, you know, you still have those feelings going in there. And, you know, uh, Anthony and I were actually in the locker room, you know, just joking around up until we went in there and competed, you know. So it was actually good to get in there and, and feel each other out a little bit and have him feel my strength and in and, and that grappling kind of world. And um, it was a lot of fun. And it, and it was uh, – kind of a little build up to potentially something that might happen in the future. Awesome to hear. And, you know, looking at the names of the the tournament, you know, it's a shark tank of talents. Is there any names that in there that were, uh, that surprised you were in there or like, was there some names that you're surprised that they didn't make it into the tournament? Um, the, the one Russian guy was, uh, I don't know him that, that well, Yags or, or whatnot. Um, I have to do some studying on him, you know, but I heard he is, he's a very good fighter. Um, I thought Musashi was going to be in there just from hearing stuff, but um, everybody else is pretty much who you would fill out that bracket with, you know, the top guys and tough guys. And so um, not too many surprises at all. Donna? Hey, Ryan. Uh, I wanted to ask what your message, I suppose, would be to um... – so let's say the likes of Tim Johnson, Lyndon Vassell, guys whose now trajectory has been put on hold by the fact that, that you're down at, at, a, at light heavyweight. What, what do you say to guys like that? Yeah, I mean, I, I was trying to make a heavyweight happen, heavyweight fight happen, uh, you know, as soon as possible. You know, and Tim and I were talking on social media and stuff in, in respectful ways and saying, hey, let's do it. Um, but then they, they came with this opportunity, you know, this huge light heavyweight tournament asked if I wanted to be a part of it. And uh, it was something that Bellator and I agreed on, you know, let's do it. This is huge for the, for the uh, promotion, huge for Showtime. And so we jumped to this tournament and, um, you know, it was, you never know how these tournaments play out, but, you know, right after I'm done with this, it's a heavyweight title defense. If you were talking to those guys, would you tell them, hold off, see how my fight goes? Or would you tell them maybe go fight each other and, uh, and then come back to me? Yeah, I respect him a lot, you know, and like I said, we've talked on, uh, you know, social media and whatnot, and I would say that he's next, and, and I believe Veltor has said he's next, and so hold tight, and, and we'll get it done for sure at heavyweight as soon as possible. Kevin? Hey, Ryan. So, you know, having lost to Vadim Nemkov I, and watching him throughout the tournament, uh, what excites you other than, um, you know, what other prospects excite you in the heavyweight division compared to the light heavyweight division? Would we see a return if you lose uh, quickly or do you plan on staying in the light heavyweight division longer? 
Um, if I lose in the light heavyweight division, I'm going to go back up to heavyweight and defend that heavyweight title for sure. Um, the, you know, the new, the new guys that came over, um, you know, Yoel and Anthony Johnson, um, you know, Anthony hasn't fought in a while. Um, Yoel's getting up there, but you know, he seems not to age at all, you know? So, um, and then, you know, guys have been around, you know, I would say look out for Phil Davis on that other side of the bracket. You know, I know how he is. He's a competitor. He's tough. He's a weird matchup for anybody. And I wouldn't be surprised if he made it out of there, you know, uh, the winner on that side. So I'm um, a crazy bracket, but you know, those are the plans for now. Go in there, take it one fight at a time. Um, like I did with that heavyweight tournament, you know, and if uh, they go win it, if I lose, I'll go back to heavyweight. I'll take a couple more here. Jay. Hey, Ryan. Um, speaking of uh, Rumble Johnson, I mean, when he first started talking about uh, coming back from retirement, he was just jacked. He was talking about coming back at uh, heavyweight. Were you surprised to see him make the move back down to light heavyweight? Um, yeah, I thought I, I thought he would go heavyweight, you know. Um, straight, he got big for a while with doing bodybuilding and all that kind of stuff, and, and I figured he'd never kind of come back down. But I grappled him in um, submission underground in, in December. And he was about the same size as I was, maybe a little lighter at one, you know, two thirty, you know. So he can definitely make that weight, no problem. He slimmed down a bunch, and and uh, I'm excited for him. You know, he's a good guy. And and uh, when I came over to Bellator, I was I was uh, reinvigorated. You know, I was ready to rock, and and I still am. You know, and so I'm excited for these new guys to come over and continue their career, and and you know, be where they're happy. All right, we'll move on to Abdel. I'm sorry, Abdul Patel. Hi, Ryan. How are you doing, mate? Good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Um, I wanted to ask you in regards to your um, previous fight with Czech Congo. Do you see that fight ever happening again? Um, yeah, he just lost to Tim Johnson, you know, so we were going to fight him if he won. But Tim won and been looking great. So, I mean, maybe later down the road, you know, I feel like we kind of have unfinished business, but... We'll see what happens with that fight. Yeah, definitely. I also was going to say, um, uh, Scott mentioned earlier that um, if you stick around that light heavyweight, uh, you potentially they potentially look at uh, interim title in their heavyweight division. Is that something that bothers you, or is it just? Yeah, I'm not going to stick around unless it's for the tournament. You know, I'm going to as soon as that tournament's done, or I get you know if I lose out of that tournament, I'm going to go up and defend that heavyweight title as soon as possible. You know. Um, definitely that, you know, the heavyweights deserve that. And, and, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna win that tournament or, you know, lose that tournament and then fight another one down there. You know, I owe it to the heavyweight division to, to be the next one. Right, one or two more here, Giancarlo. Hi, Ryan. Uh, just one for me. Uh, you competed against Nemkov in this new norm, like no fans and also training through that. You did the grappling with Rumble. Does that help you psychologically and uh, knowing that you have those performances under your belt or maybe are some fighters a little bit more superstitious than others when it comes to that? Yeah, it was good fighting, you know, without the crowd because I didn't really know what to expect. It, it was definitely diff more different than I thought. And um, now knowing what to expect and coming in here won't be as big of a shock, really. Um, and by shock, meaning like – not a shock at all because you walk in, it's like you're in, you know, you're training, you know. And so um, I got to get amped up a little bit more, which you, the crowd used to do. Um, so that's, that's great having that under my belt. And then, yeah, competing always is, is a, you know, I was staying busy and, and feeling those, you know, those nerves and, and traveling and going to compete was great, you know. And uh, not only that, going to compete against somebody I potentially could fight, you know, in this next year. And so um, both those things really helped, I believe. Thank you very much, Ryan. We'll be joined here shortly by Leoto Machida.